I mean, my God, I worked on the sun in its <clears throat> heyday, but even I didn't come up with any of that, cobblers. How where do they get it from? But what's the impact on the family? Here's her husband, Prince William, in Sheffield. And now we learn that staff at the hospital, the London clinic that Kate attended, where the king, by the way, was also treated uh, last year, someone's been caught trying to access Kate's confidential notes. Speaking with you just before the news, Health Minister Maria Caulfield insisted the apparent medical record breach is a serious issue and asked, should it go to the cops? I say this as someone who's still on the nursing register. The, is, the rules are very, very clear for all patients uh, that uh, unless you're looking after that patient or unless they've given your cons their consent to you, you should not be looking at patients' notes. And I don't particularly want to comment on the Princess of Wales, but for anyone... I was, you know, I was you asking what action should be taken, yeah. Minister. So there, there are rules in place and the Information Commissioner can levy fines, there can be prosecutions, your regulator, so as a nurse, my regulator would be the NMC, can take but enforcement But it's a crime, action. isn't it, Minister? It is, it is. Well, is. It absolutely Surely is. the police, okay. then, if it's a crime, the police should look at it, Minister. Well, the police, uh, my understanding is uh, that the police have been asked uh, to look at it. Whether they take uh, action, uh, you know, that is a matter for them. But the Information Commissioner can also do uh, take prosecutions, can also uh, issue fines. The NMC, other health regulators can strike you off the register if the breach uh, is serious enough. So there are particularly uh, hefty implications if you are caught looking at notes yeah. on medical records that you should not be looking at. Stuart Purvis has had just about any job worth having in the field of TV news. He was non-executive director at Channel 4, editor of Channel 4 News, editor-in-chief of ITN. He's also been a senior executive at Ofcom, and he joins me now. Stuart, you and I were both around during the days of Princess Diana. Do you feel there are shades of that that we're witnessing now? Morning to you, Gov. Uh, good morning, Nick. Yeah, I was, uh, I was also made a number of documentaries with, uh, with Diana, and, uh, and I saw what you described at close hands, uh, at close quarters. And uh, what we have not seen so far, Nick, thank goodness, is the chasing of members of the royal family yeah. down the street, the cars chasing, which, of course, was actually what led to the, the yeah. death of Diana. But in pretty much every other regard, I think this is worse. because this well, is the, 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 Why is that, sir? Yeah. Well, because what we've got is almost a perfect storm here, created mostly by online media. And we've got a kind of recycling. Now, I'll give you a good example. I was rung by somebody this week who said, uh, and they repeated to me what they said, a story that was about to happen. I'm not going to repeat it now because it was Thank so you. outrageous. Thank and I said, and I said, where did you get this from? And they said, an American royal expert on TikTok. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> is, is that what it's come to? The, and then, of course, what's happening is some, some newspaper websites, some are recycling this stuff. So we've got a kind of you know, a, a, a circle and recircling of these rumours, and they kind of up the higher you go up the up the rumour yeah. uh, in probability, you're driving up your number of impacts. So actually, these people, there's a word for it, clickbait, yes. and that's what it's. That's what's driving this. It's not newspaper sales; it's clickbait. But Stuart, you're uniquely positioned because you've been a boss of newsrooms, you've been a documentary maker, you've also been a regulator. So, what needs to happen? Well, the fact is that the kind of area we are talking about. Um, is, is mostly unregulated in terms of something like TikTok. Newspaper websites fall within the newspaper regulator. They would say all they are doing is reporting what people say. So if some American nutter, frankly, on TikTok says something, well, we, you know, we're entitled to report what that is. But here, here you see what's, what's happening and how, uh, what, is ha what, is, what is actually the Princess of Wales accused of? She's accused of having an operation, a serious operation, and not yet, not yet revealing the full details of that. Is that does that justify the kind of frenzy that's going on at the moment? Finally, if you were editing the one o'clock or ten o'clock on ITN or the Channel Four News today or tonight, what would how would you treat the story? How high up the bulletin would it be? And what aspect would you be looking at, or want your team to look at, Stuart? Well, look, it, it depends. Obviously, it depends on the story. Depends on the day. But let's just get you know the the episode about the photographs being. Uh, digitally uh, touched up. Yeah. That seemed to me a legitimate story, and I'm sure you covered it yeah. in, a, in a perfectly proper Absolutely. way. Yeah. But, but you know, so that, let's 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 restrict ourselves to the stories that have a real element of public interest, and not just any old story that comes from a TikTok or in America. Always enjoy speaking with you, Stuart Purvis. Thank you, former non-executive director, Channel Four editor, Channel Four News editor in chief of ITN, and a senior executive at Ofcom.
Let's go now to Peter Hunt, who's LBC's Royal Correspondent, and joins me now. Peter, and, and I want to absolutely get this straight, I am not in any way supporting some of the mad stories that have gone on social media, but to a point, to a point, is the Palace author of its own misfortune and that there was a news blackout for too long? Morning. Good morning. I mean, they had a media strategy that could have worked, but is now in tatters, and it may have worked slightly better if at the get-go they provided slightly more information that would have given people greater understanding and greater uh, understanding as to why they should back off, but they chose not to. So what they put into the public domain, as we've been discussing, is the abdominal surgery, not cancer-related. She wanted her personal medical information to be remain private, and we wouldn't see her until Easter. And so that was their decision. Um, and I think all the thing you've been talking about, that stuff on social media, I think that spooked them. Um, and in terms of contributing to the problems, the, the being spooked, they then provided that Mother's Day picture, uh, which had been uh, photoshopped, uh, amended, and that then added, as we've just, you've just been discussing, to more and more of these uh, conversations. So, Peter, how is the marriage between the centuries-old tradition of the British royal family and the ever-changing world of TikTok and social media, how are these two to be put together? How are these two to be lived in peaceful harmony? I don't think they can. I think that, that, that I think what a, a process that the royal family could uh, pro, uh, adopt is to try and just ignore the white noise. Um, and but they are struggling to do that. And I think what is making it harder for them is what Stuart was just saying. It's you, we have all read newspapers where they are saying, you know, how outrageous it is on social media. But those same newspapers, as Stuart was saying, are then recycling. Yes some of that information and so i think that is the crux of the problem in a sense it's the battle they're having isn't necessarily with social media it's with the what is on social media then being repeated in in our mainstream media and that that is the challenge for them and that is why we're at the, the position we're at now my final question to you is the first i put to stuart i recall you were on the beat during the days of the late princess of wales princess diana do you see any shades of that sort of obsession fixation here no, because I think the crucial thing that William, a hard-won victory for William, is that one of his crucial and understandable obsessions, because of what we're talking about, is that of privacy for himself, particularly for his wife and for his children. And I think what he has achieved, which wasn't around uh, during the Diana times, is there. it is vanishingly rare, if at all, that you would now see a paparazzi picture of his family on the front pages of a newspaper. And if we think back to yes. photos that we talk about, yes. Kate, uh, there was that paparazzi picture of her and her mother. That didn't appear in any UK publication. It was abroad. Of course, we then did have you know, the other conversation about Kate was yesterday, wasn't it, when she was seen uh, shopping. Yes. Uh, that was a pretty clear, I think, invasion of her privacy. Uh, the papers put it on the front page. They must have known that Kensington Palace wouldn't uh, kick up. Clearly, the view was that But a call that was made, don't you think? A senior yes. executive at The Sun would have phoned KP. Kensington Palace wouldn't they? I would have thought. I would be, I'd be amazed that there was no communication yeah. in advance of. They wanted to know that they wouldn't kick up. The couple didn't kick up. Clearly, the hope at Kensington Palace was that this would address one of the many rumours. I mean, I heard it travelling on a train the other day where four young people were discussing how she was missing. So they would have hoped. They would have hoped. I mean, these same young people spent the whole time saying how they don't really follow the royal family. Um, but they... they <laughs> They, they would have hoped that that would help. But then as I'm talking to you now, I'm looking out the corner of my eye at a website which says how Kate body double conspiracy theory spread on social media. Incredible. Peter, always enjoy speaking with the LBC's Royal Correspondent, Peter Hunt. Thank you for that.